This is the fourth and final part of this run through of the little round top scenario. Now, the sun begins to set in the west, and, and visibility now is reduced for all units. Now, during these dusk turns, this is the, the 1900 to 2000 turn, and during this turn, all uh, firing ranges are halved, rounding up, and there is a neg negative two dice roll modifier for firing at ranges over one hex. Now, <laughs> given the situation, I'm not sure who this really favours. If the Confederates can seize that other hex on the round top, it may prevent Union forces from firing effectively against them and dislodging them from that position. However, uh, it'll also make it that limited range will also make it harder for those Confederate batteries to target the Union defenders currently on those heights. However, uh, we've seen today that they haven't been too effective in their firing anyway. Now, the Union win the initiative on this final turn by a roll of 5 plus 1 to 5, thus narrowly securing it. And this could probably be the most important initiative, initiative roll of the game, as it will allow the Union to have a first attempt uh, in this hour at dislodging the Confederates from Little Round Top. Now, Meade selects to have uh, Ayr's men activate first, and thus enabling Day's brigade to charge the Confederate positions on the heights. But before all this happens, chains of command are checked, and the desperate fighting and manoeuvring around Little Round Top, particularly around those heights, has put many forces of both sides out of command, and their activations will thus be limited this turn. Now, the efficiency draw ensures that this will be a pretty fair fight to the finish. The Confederates draw a three, and the Union forces draw a three, one, three, and two, with the all-important Fifth Corps uh, receiving one of those three um, efficiency markers. And with this done, Ayers' division activates, and Day's men charge straight back up the heights. It is uh, a very uh, bloody battle here, bloody fighting, but they, they narrowly succeed in forcing the defenders back from those heights. However, Hood's activation follows immediately, and the Confederates waste no time in trying to take those heights back. Anderson's men successfully beat back Union defenders on the southern side of Little Round Top, and in the north, Robertson finally turns his brigade east and prepares to uh, launch an assault up the hill. Another hood activation uh, follows immediately. Uh, Robertson's men advance further to the heights, while in the south, Anderson's men continue to clear out Union defenders in that surrounding area. Now, unfortunately, both Law and Benning are, are partially paralysed by their command issues, issues and, and so they do relatively little at this stage. Some Union reinforcements brought on from the north uh, before yet another hood activation follows. Now, at this stage, it seems like this orbit spells disaster for the Union, Union, and in an attempt to collapse the Union lines, Hood tries to coordinate all of his brigades. However, a roll uh, with modifiers resulting in zero spells disaster for his division. Confusion reigns throughout, and not a single unit moves. Now, McLaw activates briefly in the north, and uh, Kershaw's brigade is brought around to take the place that Robertson's men have left. Then, as luck would have it, Hood receives his fourth and final activation for the turn. Now, Robertson's fresh brigade charges straight up the heights of Little Round Top, routing the Union defenders from their positions. South of Robertson's brigade, Anderson's men continue to drive back the Union forces, pushing them down the hill to the east. And by the end of this activation, the Confederates control both of those positions at the top, at the heights of Little Round Top. This is enough to secure victory in the scenario if they can hold on until the end of the hour. The main problem is that Hood is now out of activations and he must really just wait and see what the Union response will be. Uh, the Confederate flanks are also uh, rather exposed here, particularly in the north, and Union forces are, are flooding into this vital area from, from all sides. More, un, un, uh, more Union reinforcements arrive in the north before Barnes receives his second activation for the turn in the south. Now it's Vincent's turn now to charge, and his brigade begins once again to claw their way back up the little round top. Now the results here are mixed. In the north, the 44th New York is forced to retreat. But in the south, an important combined attack by the famous 20th Maine and the 83rd Pennsylvania force the rebels to retreat. And this opens up a clear path to the top of the little round top. And so the Union forces take a special uh, a Warren phase, as a special rule for this game, to take a free brigade action. Vincent's men activate again, and they climb once again back up the heights of Little Round Top. Union artillery fire then forces the 3rd Arizona to retreat back from the heights to the north, and once again, 
Little Round Top is clear of rebel forces. Now, over the series, a following series of activations, the Union eventually manages basically to squeeze in on the Confederate flanks around Little Round Top, and this forces several rebel units back down into the valley to the west and away from the heights. In particular here, uh, Fisher's men of the 335, this is the um, orange and blue units with a purple dot, they enter the battle and they commence a strong drive up from the south, clearing the Confederate forces from around the base of Little Round Top. And this, uh, it effectively secures the area for the Union, and thus uh, the scenario for the Union. It, up until this point, it, it was a very close finish. At one stage, it looked like the Confederates were about to sweep down all along that eastern side of Little Round Top and, and maybe even mop up those Union positions. But a series of really desperate counterattacks forced them back. Again, emphasis on the 20th Maine and then the 83rd Pennsylvania, which, which hold the heights. Uh, to their immediate south, Fisher's Brigade is at nearly full strength and they can easily clean up any Confederate presence in the area. By this stage, the rebels uh, really are exhausted. Just about all their regiments are disordered. They've suffered heavy losses. Uh, Robertson still has some uh, good strength units close to the little round top. But they can't do much by themselves. Uh, they need to support on their flanks. And any advance by Robertson's men will only further expose their northern flank, which has already been pushed at uh, by the Union. And this final turn was very messy. Administrative counters built up quite a lot. And uh, with a lot of retreats happening, it became quite large and confusing to follow what was happening. Uh, because so many units were, were driving towards those two hexes at the top, the little round top, uh, there was a lot of congestion and in many cases the retreat of one unit forced uh, the displacement of units behind it and this congestion also led to a, a series of chain reactions following routes where one unit routed um, when that happened all adjacent units needed to check and many among them also routed as a result and the union had uh, more routed units than the confederates and i put this down larger to their lower cohesion rating and their lower uh, their, sorry their closer congestion around little round top they're more um, densely packed. Now the Confederates tended to be able to order themselves more clearly in the rough terrain compared to the rough woody terrain um, that the Union troops typically found themselves in. The Unions are of course, the Union troops were more, as I said, more densely packed in on the eastern side of the little round top. Now the large number of units from Anderson's brigade, this is uh, again the yellow and tan units with a green dot, is due to the fact that after his successful charge of the little round top, his men were uh, right in the thick of the action, uh, plus being on the southern flank, they were very quickly cleaned up once those Union reinforcements arrived down there. And for one last time, uh, here's a look over the field as that night starts to set in and as the uh, the rebels pull back away from Little Round Top and as the Union resecure their hold on their flanks. So ultimately the, unions, the Union won, um, but very close, and, and even if... The Confederates secured those heights. There are so many Union reinforcements now in this area that they wouldn't have been able to hold it for long uh, into the coming hours.